Today on The Flush, we're road tripping through North Dakota, hunting for wild birds in wide open spaces, all in the name of Pheasants Forever's Habitat Mission. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. In Western North Dakota, you'll find wide open spaces, wild birds, and a 90 year old farmer that loves to share both. The reason why I like to have people come out is People don't understand, you've got to call the herd. I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to call, but these guys might. Frank Hatzenbuehler manages his property for wildlife so that others can enjoy it. I like meeting people. I don't know if that man has ever turned anyone away that has knocked on his door and asked permission. First thing I want to do is I want to know who's in there. The next one is they got to use the birds. We graciously accept Frank's rules. Well, what if we posted you on the end? Well, I guess, I'm not that good of a shot no more, but good more. Neither is Noah. <laughs> That's why we need more guns. Despite my attempts to pry Frank out of retirement. Well, I'll be down there. I have got my, I've got my 12 gauge. Sure. <laughs> he prefers to watch us from his ATV. You can tell that he just has pure joy and a pure heart for hosting hunters and he lives for it and he takes a special pride in it and he revels in it. You got a heater in here? And we revel oh, in the nice. opportunity that he's created. North Dakota, winter has set in. First snow of the year. That's one of the best days of the entire season to hunt because for one day, the pheasants don't know what to do. You ready to have a good day out there, huh? We're gonna hunt together. You're not hunting on your own, we're hunting together. We are in Southwest North Dakota, good old Southwest, where birds are a plenty. A lot of open grasslands and some trees, some shelter belts, some good species for pheasants. Renee Tamala and Rachel Bush are part of North Dakota's growing Pheasants Forever team. Along the edge of that. At one time we were an all-female team and we just all had an interest in getting more women outdoors and we figured, you know, what can we do to help facilitate that? I think the constant opportunity to make things better for conservation and for hunting, but mostly the people. I love the people. We're gonna finish pushing here and then we might. They work with landowners just like Frank that want better habitat. If we walk that next draw, I definitely. Today, their field assignment is to share this wild place with us and a dedicated family of Pheasants Forever supporters. About a year ago, Pheasants Forever hosted an online auction and hosted off an opportunity to hunt with some members from the North Dakota team and the Flush TV show. I, think, I thought we saw it from up there too. Hunter Schwinn placed the highest bid for the second year in a row. <laughs> it's kind of like, I don't know, probably what my dog thinks when it points a rooster and wants to do it again. You tell him. I brought my dad and uh, my brothers, Jordan and Noah. I just love doing this as a family. We get to take them on a three-day tour of North Dakota and a couple birds in the bag as well. That's three days in a bird hunting paradise. It's supporting conservation at the, at the end of the day. You know, it's for a really, really great cause. Their donation will soon create more habitat to grow more wild birds. I mean, the birds are one part of it, the hunting is another part, but the people we meet are just as important. Nicely done. Today, we're simply here to enjoy it. It's a passion that burns, <laughs> somebody once said, and uh, it's just a blessing. 
And for me, it's just a chance to Whoa. get out into nature. Go ahead, flush it. Kind of reset the clock. Oh, ten. Ten. Whoa. <laughs> that was Whoa. Awesome. And then the birds are just so darn beautiful. Is that where it was hiding? Yeah, right where the his nose was tucked right in there. Yeah, Luna like jumped over that tuft of grass and then the hen flew out. <laughs> And of course, we love watching our dogs hunt. We're far from bagging our limit, but this hunt is about so much more than shooting birds. To be able to get into habitat like this, it's unreal. It's hard hunting in North Dakota, but it's very fulfilling. This is the primo spot. A primo spot created by Frank, a 90-year-old farmer. Yeah, and then the roosters were hanging out with too. That wants to see his favorite hunting traditions live on. Six, three. Is that okay? Then you play. Look at the way he does it is really special. I think that he gets to meet the people who are doing it, understand, set the rules, don't break the rules. Thank you. There needs to be more people in the world like Frank. What a wonderful day. Oh, here's mine. Tomorrow, we jump right back into the field on a new property full of potential and witness a puppy transforming into a bird dog. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Waltons, Benelli and by Nutrisource. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Art can be found in the strangest places. Between the towns of Dickinson and Regent, North Dakota, metal sculptures rise above the prairie along a stretch of tar road called the Enchanted Highway. If you come off I-94, you'll see the geese in flight. It's metal sculpture artwork. And we have deer, there's fish, grasshoppers, and then of course our favorite is the pheasant on the prairie sculpture. It's impressive. Enchanted Highway is neat. It's unexpected on the landscape to see it. And it's talented, honestly, it's, it's pure talent. These pieces are the work of region artist Gary Greff. He built them to give his community a boost in tourism. If you're ever in Southwest North Dakota, it's worth a drive down the Enchanted Highway. A few miles from those metal ringnecks, we set out in search of the real thing. So I think if they can hold for us, I hope we have a good day. <laughs> That's always a big if when hunting late season pheasants. It's way more rewarding to harvest a wild bird, in my opinion, a little bit more challenging. So our season out here opened up, you know, early October. These birds, even on private land, have seen pressure. So they get a little wily, they get a little spooky. They'll flush well ahead of pointers, well ahead of flushers. Where's the birds, Mona? Good girl, Veda. <laughs> Come on. They are pushing our limits every day out here. Come on. Let's find some birds.
man. That looks like a point yeah. now. You want me to set the edge down here? At some point in this, there will be a big explosion. At least, that's our hope. No hunt goes as expected. Yeah, we're making them nervous. We're at least closing in on them. And you can't count on anything. There goes hen. It's cracking. You just never know what you're gonna get out of it. I'm hearing cracking over here. I love that. Hen, hen, hen. Oh, look at them all go. Look at them all go. Whoa, no. Unknowns might just be the best part of every hunt. One got up there. <laughs> right. One got up here. <laughs> You just don't know what you're gonna get, and so it keeps you coming back for more. My dog on point right in front of us here, 40 feet in front. Be a rooster, hold it tight. Did he got a point? Oh, there was, hen, nice. Oh, hen, oh my gosh. That was under my feet. You gotta have to have a good heart to hunt these birds. Right in front of us, hen, hen. Uh, maybe we close, oh, rooster! Hey, nice shooting, bud! <laughs> There's no way that one was gonna get away. We got kind of like an organized chaos here because we've got four of us and seven dogs, I think, and everybody's running in a big pack. Thank you. It's been amazing. Hey, my friend. Nicely done. So if we get if we get one out of every hundred, I'd say. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a hard-earned North Dakota bird. Yep. Holy cow, there's a lot of birds in here. <laughs> Let's see if we can find some more that'll hold. The ones that get up, you know, in front of us, they don't stand much of a chance. Whoa! This is a classic wow. late season North Dakota pheasant hunt. A few birds hit our bag. Nice shooting, guys. Oh, rooster! Most escape. <laughs> oh. And we leave feeling satisfied. Hey, 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 hey. Well done. Let me guess, it's another pretty one. It's amazing to see these places and the people that are with. It's what you would expect from a late, late season North Dakota hunt. The Flush is brought to you by Ruffland Performance Kennels, Big Timber Fasteners, Sage and Breaker, DeWalt, and by Aluma Trailers. Pheasants Forever remains committed to protecting and restoring wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and you'll help us to create more habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your $35 will make a difference today that will last forever. On a picture-perfect North Dakota prairie, we set out for the golden hour hunt. Come on, hunt them up. This is the kind of setting pheasant hunters like us dream about. There's just so much to enjoy. The scenery, the wide open expanses, and the unexpected opportunities that come out of them. Renee Tamala follows her puppy Quill with optimism and a touch of anxiety. Uh, he's my crazy Quill. He's got a lot of quirks to him, a lot of drive, and uh, that drives me nuts. <laughs> if you have ever hunted with a puppy, you know the feeling. Quill is a one-year-old German wire-haired pointer. Renee has trained with him all year, but this is his first hunting season in pursuit of wild birds. He's been tracking this one for a little bit, so it might have moved. This is his first season since he's a year old. That's a good boy, you whoa. We're learning together. Is Quill on point? Yeah. We're at? 40 feet, right where you're at. 
Renee entered this field with a puppy. Oh, there goes Ben. Oh, That's ben. a good boy. Oh. That's a good boy. She's leaving with a confident young bird dog. You're all grown up. <laughs> you got yourself a bird dog You're there. You're all grown up. Oh, that's awesome. Albeit. Good boy, you woke. A bird dog still learning on the job. Oh, no kidding. That's my good boy. Every dog has their moment that just clicks. That's my good boy. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> this is Quills. Try to grab it? No. It They'll spur you. Oh, there goes. There goes Scott. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's been an amazing season with him. <laughs> good boy. Bring it here. Yeah, he uh, he's just indescribable. That is my good boy. You got to take a bird over him. We could end this hunt right now, but once you've experienced success. Yeah, that's a big old bird. It's human nature to want more. More yes. good, you guys. Can I get to carry it? He, do you want me to carry it? I'll carry it. It doesn't come easy. It makes you grow as a hunter, and it makes you learn more, and it makes you try harder, and so I don't want it to be easy. In the final rays of sunlight, we celebrate a golden milestone on the prairie. Up the road, our celebration continues with another member of Pheasants Forever's team. So these are two, uh, two pheasants that I plucked and I'm in the process of roasting. Emily Swoliar is our Southwest Precision Egg and Conservation Specialist. She has a heart bigger than anything and she is putting on a wild game feast for us tonight. Uh, this is Pheasant Cafe. Emily skipped today's hunt to prepare us this wild game feast. We're going to have venison, we're going to have duck, we're going to have salmon, and kind of everything in between. I probably ate more on this hunt than any other hunt in the past. Tomorrow, Emily and Renee raise the bar even higher Rooster. on our final day on the prairie. <laughs> The Flush is brought to you by Chief Upland, Wells Lamont Gloves, Superior Pump, Southwire Tools and Equipment, and by Wing It. In America, public lands belong to everyone. It's a freedom Americans are born with, but it's a freedom that comes with a price. Especially for hunters that care about wildlife and healthy habitat. That's why we're in North Dakota celebrating Hunter Schwinn's contribution to Pheasants Forever's conservation mission. His bid on this bird hunt will provide funds to protect and create more wild places just like this. Morning, Quill. On the final morning of our three-day journey, Emily Spoliar leads us on a new property. How do you want to tackle this? It's starting in that corner, kind of working across the hilltops there. A lot of times sharp tail like to sit on top of the flat tops of ridge lines like that. I'm a precision ag and conservation specialist and I've been with Pheasants Forever for just over three years now. Those huns especially like to feed in that. She is just one of the best humans that you'll meet. She is as bird crazy as they come. It's my dream job. Both Renee and Emily share a deep passion for their dogs, habitat, and wild birds. That dog's on so when people think about pheasant hunting in North Dakota, typically they're talking about this area, southwest part of North Dakota. Now there's birds to be had across the state, but this is kind of the heart of pheasant country in North Dakota. Oh, there goes a the bird. There's a rooster. Rooster? Another rooster. Go down in our spot. Look at that. That's so pretty. Yeah, you land right there. Oh, there goes the rooster. There goes nice. one. Bird down. That's gotta feel good. One in the bag. Bridger, come on now. Rooster! Nice. 
Nice shot, Emily. Where's that dead bird? Touch it up. Touch it up. Yeah, she got it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> you have a bird. Yeah. What you want? He's on a point. Go, go, go. Oh, Kristen. Ooh, that bird just hit. Leg is dropped. I work hard to drive those dollars into the ground for Quill to have the opportunities for myself to be tired out, to see a quality space for wildlife. Yeah, he was just birdie the whole time. It's our job to work harder for it and to create more of it and to protect it. <laughs> and of course, to celebrate success stories with like-minded people. Come out here to North Dakota. It's a good place to be. It is a good place to be. Whoa. Whoa. Actually, it's a great place to be. Oh. Hunting for wild birds in wide open wild spaces. Just the excitement of, you know, you're pushing some thick cover, some cattails, and then you have a rooster get up right in front of you. Uh, that's, that's pretty tough to beat. It may be tough to beat, but next year, we'll try again. I don't know if I can get swing it on the wives and go friends at home. <laughs> I can only say triple the lifetime so many times before I get in trouble, so. Oh, we'll see about that. After all, this annual hunt is for America's wild birds and wild places. Tough to put into words because it, it, until you experience it, you can't believe it's here.